right, good evening. How's everybody tonight? And uh, I know cold is right, and I've got my corduroy blazer and my fuzzy shirt on, and pastor asked me if I had my long handles on as one thing I didn't include, but boy, it sure was cold out there today, wasn't it? Amen. All right, well, glad to have you here. Let's go ahead and stand uh, this evening and sing at Calvary, page number 57. We'll sing verse one and four. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing that it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, then my burden so from liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan, oh, the grace that brought it down to man, oh, the mighty gulf that God did spend at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. All right, page number 59, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. So the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for being here this evening. <clears throat> and uh, just a few announcements here before we get into our study tonight. And thank you for your faithfulness. We've got our small couples group Bible study at uh, my house at 630 on Mondays. We're going over a, uh, a biblical uh, discussion on finances. And so um, that's going to be a blessing, I know, and an encouragement to our, our couples that are coming to that. And if, if you know somebody that just wants to get a handle on their finances, uh, that would be a great time to jump in and get acclimated to that. And we have a great time of fellowship, so I want to invite those uh, to that. Our prime timers are having a meeting uh, March the 6th at 11 a.m. And as always, our offering boxes are on the back. You can give uh, there, or you can give online as well, um, and so thank you for uh, being mindful of that and uh, honoring the Lord with your tithes and your offerings. Uh, be faithful to your uh, mission praying and your mission giving, and um, so I hope you're still going through that list. Uh, it wasn't just a one-time thing. We're, we're covering our missionaries every day, every week, and 52 weeks out of the year, and it helps us to stay in uh, contact with uh, just the mission theme of our church and our missionaries that we support and of course we blanket them in prayer and they certainly need that uh, also our focus night is uh, going to be march the 7th is that right march the 7th in the evening service and so uh, if you have not signed up for that please do that so we can know how to divide those groups up and looking forward to that it's just something uh, knew that we're trying to get uh, our focus on the practical side of us engaging on a, on a personal one-on-one -on -one basis with uh, those that God puts in our path and trying to 
uh, wait for a door of utterance that we can share our, our faith, our testimony, share the gospel with them and uh, see the Lord save people, amen? And so looking forward to that. All right, be mindful of uh, everything else that we have coming up on our calendar. And uh, I do want to say uh, this, <clears throat> with the snow as crazy as it is, uh, if there is a need that some of the elderly folks have to uh, be shoveled out or you need something cleared off, please let me know. Um, Miss Marion Wine needed some help and she posted to our Facebook and uh, so we were on that pretty quick and uh, I do uh, several already but uh, we'll try to uh, work that in if there's a need there uh, so please let us know um, if it gets to be too big I'll just have to haul my tractor and trailer and and uh, do it that way but uh, we'll we'll try to do our best with the crazy weather that we've been having, all right? Um, okay, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, do our study for tonight. Uh, we're on friendship, faith, and fellowship, and just kind of the practicalness of what we need to be thinking and what, how we need to be preparing ourselves for uh, this coming year and engaging the way the Lord wants us to in the work of the Lord. And uh, last couple weeks, uh, three weeks ago, we started on friendship and just looked through what the Word of God had to say about uh, how does the Bible define friendship and what are the things that I need to be considering when I'm engaging with people uh, and uh, how do I get outside of my comfort zone and we, we looked at you have to be willing to let people in your life and be a part of somebody else's in order to be a true friend and uh, so the Bible had great detail to uh, give us in and really uh, gauging our friendship and how we go about doing that. And so I hope that was a blessing to you. We gave a handout sheet on that so that you could take that home and, and uh, process that. And then uh, last week we started um, on the faith part of uh, this study. And so before we get started, let's uh, have a word of prayer and we'll get into it tonight. Father. I just want to thank you for the opportunity it is uh, and that we have to meet together with your people, open up your word and study it and preach it, teach it. And uh, Lord, may it be a benefit to these folks that are here, to the folks that are listening and, and watching online. And uh, God, that you would just uh, prepare our hearts and revive our hearts to, uh, uh, Lord, uh, be so set on the work of the Lord that we engage and uh, Lord, we get outside of our comfort zone and we apply these practical truths from your word so that, um, Lord, we can see fruit and uh, people come to a saving knowledge of you and thereby glorifying your precious name. And Lord Jesus, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's just do a quick review. Last week, we started on the idea of faith and I, I just thought it so relevant that we, we needed to describe and define the gospel and salvation from a biblical standpoint because in our society, you're going to be coming up against a lot of people that are taught uh, religious ideas. They're taught maybe spiritual ideas even, but we, we have studied and realized that neither religious or spiritual things are correct if they're not based upon the Word of God. And so uh, we just define some of those terms and really in, in our approach to a lost person, we needed to know what we needed to focus on. Because if we start just saying these Christian cliche words, they'll go right along with it and they'll still be lost as a goose in a, in a hailstorm and, and they, won't, they won't know the truth. And so we need to break down some of the walls of uh, false religion, false teaching, uh, spiritual ideas and concepts that, that, are, that are based on how one feels as opposed to the Word of God. And so we, we uh, uh, identified faith and, and we began to look at that. We identified the gospel and, and, uh, and then also salvation. And that led us to our next uh, topic uh, was slide 27. Bob, you're already there. Thank you. Um, uh, that uh, identifying our faith uh, with the gospel and salvation is going to lead us to a time when we're able to share our testimony. And, 
And I just want to say that that's the first place that you ought to start because you've built a relationship with this individual, you've made a connection with them, they're interested in the God that you have, and so they want to hear what that God has done for you. They want to hear what Jesus Christ has done for you, what Jesus Christ means to you, and, and how that has affected your life, because if they see no change in you, then it's just a coin toss as to, hey, well, I could, might could try this, maybe this might work in my life, and, and of course we know that Jesus Christ is absolutely the only way of salvation, and he's the only, he's the only one that can make a change in somebody that's dead spiritually. He can quicken them, make them alive, and you become a child of God, part of the family of God, and you can't go without evidence of that being born again. I'm just sorry, if you are a child of God, there's going to be evidence of life, amen? And so uh, we want to share our testimony with others. Now I'm going to point out some things biblically um, that uh, we actually have evidence in Scripture where people used their own personal testimony to be a witness uh, to somebody that was lost. And um, so I want us to be thinking, now this is week two on our faith and, and we'll be done with it this week, but if all we do is sit through this service and, and get a few pointers and we don't really try to engage that, uh, then, then it's not going to help you because uh, you need to have this down before you start talking to somebody. You need to know how to present your testimony of your conversion uh, and your born-again salvation experience with someone that is lost. And you need to be able to explain it in terms that they understand. So uh, we're going to look at staying away from Christian cliches. Um, how many of you have ever used the terminology, hey, have you been saved? All right, that's, that's, a, that's kind of a Christian terminology. Christian people understand uh, what you're saying. People that know the Bible would understand what you're saying. But somebody that doesn't know those things might be thinking, saved from what? Uh, was it a car accident that I was saved from? And uh, you know, believe it or not, a lot of people equate the word saved with a life experience that they had. And I know I'm saved because God saved me from this accident or this situation. And they make that correlation uh, physically as opposed to what the Bible means uh, uh, spiritually. You need to be born again. And so work in your testimony and through your testimony so that you can communicate that to somebody that may not even understand religious terminology. And so let's look at this tonight the idea of sharing your faith through your personal, uh, your personal testimony of being saved. Uh, Luke chapter number 8, verse 39, this is uh, something that, a passage that you'll recognize. It's a famous passage of scripture. This is the passage of scripture about the maniac at Gadara. Uh, how many of you are familiar with that? All right, so we have a, a man that was possessed with many devils. In fact, uh, uh, he falls down at the feet of Jesus Christ, and not the man, but the devils, because the devils thought that Jesus Christ was going to send them into the great deep. Now, Bible correctors are going to read that story, and they're going to say, oh, the deep is the water that they ran the pigs into, that's not what he was talking about. The deep was the abyss that Jesus Christ could have sent them to by way of judgment and punishment uh, that he did with the angels that kept not their first estate. And so they were not wanting the Lord Jesus Christ to send them into annihilation. And so uh, they fall down at his feet. He, he, uh, he addresses them and uh, he delivers this man from a legion of devils <clears throat> and the devils go into the herd of swine you know the story the swine then runs into uh, uh, over you know the edge into the water they drowned and and the, the the town people at that time run jesus out of town because uh, the lord jesus christ just ruined some of their illicit gain and i say illicit gain because 
uh, pigs were a defiled creature, right, uh, for the Jews, and uh, they were profiting off of that, and they didn't want to have anything to do with it, um, and so they run them out of town. But the man that Jesus Christ delivered from uh, the legion of devils, uh, this is the verse where we're going to look at. He makes a statement. He says, Lord, just take me with you. I want to be with you, man. I, I'm out of here. Uh, I got no ties to this place. It's been rough. People don't like me. Uh, the, the stigma, right? I'm plastered all over Facebook and Twitter. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. And I, I, I just want to be with you. And, and that's kind of the natural tendency when we get saved. Isn't our safe place, church? really is. It's where fellow believers believe the same thing and, you know, we have this bond and commonality, but that's not where Christ demands of us to do the work. Where he demands of us to do the work is out in the field, right? And so where, where we live, a church is a place where we, we can grow and, and gain encouragement, but the work of the Lord is done outside the church doors for the most part. And this is what Jesus Christ says to this man, return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done for you. See, that's a little different, isn't it? Unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And so this instance of testimony from this man, he's going to be sharing his testimony with a lost community. For you and I, that might be our neighbor, that might be our co-worker, uh, that might be just somebody that we meet passing by in a, in a business establishment or just through the natural, natural course of life. And so uh, this is the possessed man uh, that is now made free, now is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he goes back to the town and he tells the people what Jesus Christ did to him. And that's really that's really where you and I need to focus our testimony at. So many times, have you heard somebody's testimony? They want to talk about the details of what God did for them. And uh, they might have been addicted to drugs, or they might have had you know, a bad family life, or they might have been in a bad accident, and, and how God used that. But really, what we want to communicate is not what God did for us, but God did to us. And what he did to us was he gave us life. He brought me back from the dead. He changed my nature and gave me the Holy Spirit of God. I now am a child of God. And that's what we want to communicate in our testimony with somebody else because they're not, in, they're not interested in trying the next new thing to get their life on track. They really want to change. They don't know it, but that's really what they want. And so we got to communicate what God did to us. Well, what did he do to us? And you hath he quickened, which were dead, and trespasses and sin. Ephesians, uh, you know, chapter number 2, uh, verse 1. And so we passed from death to life. We've been made a child of God. And to many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the children of God. See, you, you were at enmity with God. You are a child of the devil. You are a child of wrath. But what God did to me was he brought me near and gave me a relationship with him. Man, that's life changing. You know the old crazy saying, right? Give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. Have him hang out with Dixon and he'll be able to feed himself for a lifetime. Teach him how to fish, and, and, and he can feed him for a lifetime. So we, we, don't wanna, we don't want to say, hey, just start coming to church or that kind of a thing. We want to communicate the change that was, that was made in us. We need to express how it feels to be a child of God, how it feels to know that God is your Father and Jesus is your Lord. Well, that's what that man did. And that man went through the entire community and shared his testimony with lost people. And he said, I want to tell you what God did to me. Well, there's another passage of scripture that focuses on sharing testimony. And it's John chapter number 1, verses 40 and 41. 
Uh, this is a little more familiar to us because it's the story uh, of the disciples and, and uh, really Andrew and Simon Peter. And so this is the idea of sharing uh, your testimony uh, of salvation with a family member. Now, how many of you have ever tried to do that before? Sharing your testimony with a lost person is a cakewalk as opposed to sharing your testimony with family. You want to know why? Because your family absolutely knows what you were. They know what you are. They know your faults. They know, they, they know it all. And guess what? You're not better than me. And it's the natural ebb and flow, specifically of siblings, to say you're not going to tell me. I know more than you, right? There's an arrogance there. And there's a little bit of a hard sell. Uh, I hate to use that word, but when a child's talking to a parent, because it's the natural way for a parent to say, I know more than you, Skippy. <laughs> you're just a youngster. You're still wet behind the ears. You, right? you don't know. You're not telling me. Well, okay, doing that in and of ourselves is a very difficult thing. But if we're doing it according to the word of God and we're waiting for the door of utterance, then God will open up that door of utterance with lost people. He'll open up that door of utterance with lost family members as well. And listen to this. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, uh, which is being interpreted the Christ. And so here we have Andrew. I, there, there's a lot of churches that start an Andrew fellowship, you know, and that's the idea of reaching your family first and, and going there and, and uh, just communicating. And, and many of us had the burden to see our family saved. And so uh, families, a little bit different. Did you notice... Uh, when Andrew, uh, he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, we have uh, found the Messiah. And, and he's, he's actually wanting uh, Simon Peter to come with him and go with him. And so uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm seeing in this verse is I got two brothers, but Andrew is wanting to show Peter. In other words, he's wanting to prove to him. So how would you and I in our testimony, prove to a family member about the change that has taken place in us. How do we do that? They need to see the change externally, not just internally. And so very few family members' uh, stories that I have had related to me went like this. I got saved, I drove home, told my brother or my sister or my mom and dad and they got saved too did that happen it, absolutely there has been some but for a majority of that it really doesn't work out that way because family's kind of a skeptical creature aren't they and so simon uh is responding to andrew's attitude his joy he's saying come and see uh, it's something you're aware of and i want to show you and so with family they're already, Lord willing, you've got a, a, a good of enough communication with your family that they already know that you're maybe going to church. They already know that you're pursuing that. And so they're watching, they're looking, they're, they're looking for attitude change, behavior change. And that's going to weigh pretty heavy in you sharing your testimony. I know I used to be this, brother, but God did this. And I'm on a new path. And so that needs to be communicated as it pertains to family. So most of us don't even spend the time to think about what we want to communicate in our testimony. Our testimony goes something like this, and I won't take the time to do it. We start at the very beginning. It was dark. And I saw a light at the end of the tunnel. And so I just, I started going toward that light. And when I got to the light, somebody slapped me. And when they slapped me, I cried. That was my birth. And they go all the way back to the beginning. Well, maybe not that far back, but we start telling this story. And it's a very long, long detail-oriented story. And what has a tendency to happen when preachers go too long?
right? Drool out the side of your mouth. Why? Why is that? Because you're tuning out maybe too much information overload. And, and we're guilty of it, but guess what? So are you. You know, I have somebody telling me a story, and I'm wired like this so badly. And I say badly because it's not a good thing. It's a, it's, it's a negative thing about me. And if you qualify a statement two or three times, I've already checked out. I want to know A, B, C. Well, uh, yeah, well, the other night we went, what was it the other night? I don't know. Well, we were doing this, and then we went there, and so anyway, that's what happened. And, and so that night, and I was wearing a red jacket. I don't know if it was a red jacket. Maybe it was more burnt orangish, but, you know, it had buttons up. To, and it's got nothing to do with what they want to communicate to me. Don't let your testimony be that right? Communicate what Jesus Christ did to you, how that changed you. That's how you do it with a family member. That's how you do it with a lost. I see another passage of scripture here, and this probably is the most difficult, not that it's cantankerous, like family can be cantankerous and very abrasive with one another, uh, even lost people, that can be kind of uh, uh, strangers, that can be kind of volatile sometimes, but the hardest people, in my opinion, uh, to win is religious people. Have you ever tried to witness to a religious person? You spend most of your time trying to get them lost, right? Uh, just to get them saved. And so uh, sharing your faith with religious people. Now, I'm going to go to the Apostle Paul because I don't know anybody better in the Word of God that uh, did that. He was absolutely, consistently trying. He had such a burden for, I was just reading through Romans, he, man, he would wish himself accursed for his countrymen. I mean, Paul loved the Jewish people, and he had a burden for that. Even though God made him the apostle to the Gentiles, where did he go first? He went to the Jews, and I mean, he was just consumed with that. He wanted to see his religious people saved. And so Acts chapter number 22, and it, it'll be up on the board. This is kind of a longer passage of scripture, but verses 6 through 15, this is the account of uh, Paul uh, teaching and preaching and recounting his conversion. And uh, he's, he's giving that um, uh, to Jewish people. And so uh, here we go, uh, verse number 6, and you'll find it up on the screen. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that uh, were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when uh, I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of them that uh, were with me, I came into Damascus, and one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And uh, the same hour I looked upon him, uh, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that, that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen, and heard. And so uh, we, we see that Paul is sharing his conversion story and he's telling the story about what Jesus did to him. And uh, this is what he share, this is what he communicates in his testimony, uh, who you were, his life. And so everybody knew who Paul was, Saul, I should say Saul before his salvation, he was Saul, not uh, Paul. And so he was persecuting the church, wasn't he? He was hauling people into death, and everybody knew that. And so that's the life, and he talked about his diligence uh, in doing that. 
uh, several times, and, and how he was so passionate hauling people off to jail, and, uh, and that's who he was. On that road to Damascus, you understand, he was going to put people into jail and to persecute believers. Uh, and so Paul was sharing his life and what led up to that. Uh, when, you, uh, when you heard the Bible, and so uh, Paul was giving the account when the Lord Jesus Christ interrupted his life and he heard, how'd you like to do, how'd you like to do this? How'd you like to hear the audible word of God? Wouldn't that be amazing? The Apostle Paul heard that with his own ears. And so he, he when I heard, and so part of your testimony is going to be sharing not this grandioso experience, although it may be a grand experience, but what we got to share with them is the word of God, right? Here's the problem. If you're not sharing what you heard according to Jesus, according to the Bible, and you share this grand experience, there will be people that will walk away from a testimony that's grandioso and think, man, I'm, I, I'm not saved because I didn't have that kind of conversion. Uh, and, and you might have somebody not get saved because they're waiting for this big emotional swell of, of, of amazement and it never really happens. And so Paul communicated when he heard the word of God. And then you need to communicate uh, what you realized. And, and what you realized was you needed to be going to church. Is that right? What you realized was you need to be baptized. What you realize is you needed a new home, heaven. Is, is that what we're supposed to be communicating? What are we supposed to be communicating, folks? Let me ask you a question. Why, why do you need to be saved? You're what? Sinful. We're sinners, right? We, we need to communicate uh, what, what I realize and what I realized when I got saved was that I was an offense to a holy and righteous God because I was sinful. And I knew that. And I understood that there was a gap. There was, there was a problem between God and me. And it wasn't his fault. Now we're starting to see a different twist on it, aren't we? We talked about that when we were delivering that salvation message, but that's what I've got to communicate when I'm talking to somebody and giving my testimony. Look, I realized that I was a sinner and I had offended God. And when I realized that, that broke me. That's communicating to somebody else, you know what, you've got a sin problem too. That's our starting point, not do you want a big mansion in heaven. So you need to communicate what you realized. You're sinful, you're separated for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And then you need to communicate why you believed. Uh, why did you believe in Christ? Well, why did you believe in Christ? I know how I can answer that, but I can't answer that for you. Are you able to communicate that to a lost person personally? Why did you believe? I see your heads are turning and you're thinking the wheels are going round and round. And if you're not thinking about that, why did you believe? Do what? Brother Jim said the truth hurts for the benefit of those that are watching on Facebook. The truth hurts. I, you know, I, I kind of agree with that because we call it in the, in the religious world, we call it conviction, don't we? And we know that the Spirit of God is telling us, hey, pay attention, because it's not an intellectual descent, right? Or assent. <laughs> Either way is right if you, if you play that. With the... it's, it's not just this mind thing that we do, because I've given the gospel to somebody, and they look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. They no more are moved by that than the man in the moon. Why? There's no Holy Ghost conviction. I believe because the Spirit of God was wooing me. 
And you can't get saved without that, friend. So why did I believe? Because God was doing a work in me. Now, did he force me to get saved? The answer to that is no. No, absolutely not. But he convicted me. And then when he convicted me, uh, then going through scripture, I realized that I could be made close to him. So I'm under conviction, which is showing me God's righteousness and his awesomeness, and there's a fear there, isn't there? Because those that are not with God are against God, and they go to a place of torment and punishment and separation. And man, with the Spirit doing that work in me, and I realized that I could be brought close to him, and even he could be my father, That, that made a huge impact for me. Don't you? Isn't it always nice to be in the in crowd? <laughs> Being accepted? It, it feels great to be accepted. I was away because the person just got through sharing with me, right? And so I, I want to I share, share that with somebody, why, why that affected me. Man, I realized I could be brought close to the Lord and have a relationship with him and for him to know me personally. And that's a great thing to communicate in your testimony to somebody. So why you believed, and then lastly, how God changed you. And so uh, this, this one might take a little work because if you're just getting started in your walk with the Lord and you're communicating your testimony, there may not have been a huge purpose for you before but your purpose now is to share this with everybody so that they can know God. So that they can be accepted. So that they can bring him glory. And my purpose, how God changed me, was when he made me that child, he gave me a new purpose in life. And I started living for him, for his glory, for his honor. That, that's, you know, and if I'm sharing my testimony with somebody that I know, uh, brother, that's why I'm going to church. That's why you've seen a change in me because I answer to my father now. I've got a relationship with him and that changes things. These are, these are some of the things that you want to consider in your testimony and you want to be able to give this in a relatively short period of time just to communicate to them while the Spirit of God is convicting, why the Spirit of God is drawing. And it may be that your testimony is only planting a seed. It may be that your testimony is watering uh, the plant or the seed, uh, but God's going to give the increase. So uh, at the end of your testimony, not everybody's going to get saved. Don't, don't get discouraged with that. All you're doing is allowing the Holy Spirit of God to use you for you to be a mouthpiece, uh, the, the work of the Lord that he did in you to share that with others. 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you in here, I can't see those that are on Facebook, uh, how many have shared your testimony with a lost person? Raise your hand. Okay. How many have shared that with family member? Okay. And how many shared that with another religion or some religious person? Okay. And when I say that, it's usually in the realm of Christianity, the, the, the quote unquote Christian religions, they'll give you the hardest time usually. Um, and so all right, you've shared that, and have you done that on a regular basis? And what was the response to that? How long did it take you? Uh, did, they, did the person seem receptive to you? Did it, did it flow, or, or was it an awkward conversation? How many felt uncomfortable giving your testimony? Okay, all right probably because it's not something that you've considered early uh, and thought out and planned it, it should almost be something that you could repeat and have it said the same way twice. Um, 
And, and that's terrible for me because I don't operate that way. I can't preach the same message the same way twice. I will preach the same message and it, it will be different every time. And, uh, but that can't be how your testimony is because your testimony is facts about what God did in you and what God did to you and how that affected you. And so uh, be ready to give an answer. Now, if you're not ready to give an answer, how usually does that go? Uh, eh, uh, eh, um, mm, uh, well, mm, uh, well, mm, oh, oh, wait, no, no, and, and, and this happened, and, and then you're backing up, and you're, and and you could lose somebody because you haven't done your work in polishing just the events of it. You're not selling them, but you want to communicate it well. Does that make sense? Okay, and so be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. And uh, I could, I, what if you were at the store tomorrow and somebody walked up to you and, uh, and said, uh, could, could you tell me your testimony? Now, that, that's probably never going to happen. But what if they did? Would you be able to start right there and sit right I mean, they're the pork chop, right? You're the pit bull. And, uh, you know, so would you commence eating or would you, you know, be, sh be shy and, and uh, stammering? And, and so the Bible says always be ready. And you can't be ready if you haven't rehearsed it and practiced it. And so I would challenge you this evening to get busy working on that because if you revive this year and you get passionate about friend, faith, and fellowship, God's going to bring some people by your way where you can share your testimony and that's going to lead you to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then I'm thinking of Proverbs 11:30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. And so we want to be mindful of what God's blessing, God's reward is for you and I and it is that it, we are rewarded because we're doing the work of the Lord and we're seeing people uh, say we're giving the gospel out. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and really what that means is uh, that's you producing somebody else in the Father's image. Following me, that's somebody getting saved. Uh, uh, so sharing, sharing your faith. Um, let me see where... Oh, that was it. That was it. Bob, I finished early. I, I was, I'm amazed. I, I, I was looking at my, my, my phone and I thought, no, this is too early. And you guys are saying, no, you're, it's great. Uh, but your testimony. And so I want you to be thinking about that. Uh, I want you to be working on that because I'd like to start encouraging the rest of our church family um, via Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, work on a very condensed version of your testimony, and by you giving that, that might encourage somebody else to work on theirs and understand how they can communicate that. I'd like some of you to be able to do that and share that uh, with the church. And in doing that, that'll help you iron sharpeneth iron, right? So I want you to be getting ready for that. And uh, I know that some of you probably just got a big lump in your throat, felt like somebody socked you in the stomach, but the Bible says you need to be ready to give an answer. And uh, he wasn't just saying to loudmouth, talkative preachers, right? That's to everybody be able to give an answer to every man of the hope that lies within you. All right, Brother Shea, can we uh, pass out our prayer bulletins for this evening? And... Um, I don't know why that was so fast, but it was, so praise the Lord for that. Uh, uh, I'm being nice to you tonight for some reason, I don't know. Um, let me get my pen over here, and we'll make some mention here. Uh, I continue to pray. I need one, Brother Larry. Thank you. Um, continue to pray for Terry Norman. Uh, he's uh, going to uh, be at home with uh, Marion Norman, and um, he's, he's 
going to be under hospice, and uh, that's just a very difficult thing for Miss Marion, and so uh, Marion Norman, so pray for her, pray for Terry, her, her, her son, and um, he's, he, he doesn't, it's not something that he will get over, so this will be what the Lord uses to take him home, so just pray for that situation. Many of you have been praying for uh, Pastor Mark Trotter, and so uh, they had to, uh, early this morning, um, uh, rush him to uh, back to ER. He was having just massive pain from his, the tumor that's in the front of his brain, and uh, so I haven't had any update on that. Um, he was losing some paralysis, he was having some paralysis in his face as a result of that, and uh, his speech was uh, garbled, jarbled, however you say that, um, and it just, it just didn't sound good, so uh, they were asking for prayer. I've been praying through the day today, and uh, the family would appreciate you continuing to pray for him, um, and so uh, we've got that update. Um, Miss Nyla's doing well, recovering from her uh, uh, hip surgery, and so um, continue to pray for her. Um, also, Brother Jim uh, had his hip pop back out, and they had to put it back in, uh, and so uh, just they're, they're uh, I think, going to be considering maybe all other alternatives. Beth, is that right? Surgery. All right. So, uh, since most of you can't you can't hear uh, on Facebook, um, uh, he's going to be in a in a leg brace to keep that from popping out, um, and then they're going to be trying to do some physical therapy to strengthen the muscles and get some tension back in the ligaments. That's the problem because those are so loose it keeps popping out, and so if they can't get it through that, then they may have to do some more surgery there, and he doesn't need another surgery. So. Let's just pray that that works out uh, well for him. Scott's recovering nicely from his surgery. Um, um, I know I got another one. Uh, Brother Joe was recover. He was here Sunday, recovering from surgery, and so he's he's doing well. Um, there's been so many; it's it's just running together on me. Um, Wayland's doing uh, better. Um, he just had his last uh, round for a while, um, and so uh, he spent some time in the hospital just uh, getting his numbers up, and so he's home and, and doing, doing good. Um, so praise the Lord uh, for that. Um, I just, I'm missing somebody. Anyway, let me take some prayer requests, and then it'll... Maybe it'll come to me. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray for them. And right along the same, the same notion, I mean, most of you know that I've, I've got some neighbors that, that aren't really so nice. I've got some good ones, and I've got a couple that are really doozies. And um, I was, had my tractor, and I was plowing our road, and I did my driveway and was plowing the road out. And, and uh, I was plowing the front where the entrance is to uh, the main road there. And the, the not so nice neighbor, uh, he he drove by and and just you know this is how you know when the Holy Spirit's talking to you because you don't want to do it. And all of a sudden he just told me go plow his driveway. I don't want to plow his driveway. You should do that. He won't appreciate it. So I'm having this argument with the Holy Spirit, right? Well, the Holy Spirit won because you can't, 
right? You can't win. So I, I just, you know, made a swipe all the way up around and, and did that. And, and uh, maybe that'll be the start of some eased tension and, and uh, I'll be able to, uh, to get a little bit of traction there with him. Yes? He didn't tell me to do anything. The Holy Spirit did. No, no, I don't know. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> you were hearing things. <laughs> That's right. Amen. So uh, you you pray for me in that situation. Good. Yes. Okay, so pray for James. He's having some trouble with the, the insurance company and, and uh, dealing with his new uh, prosthetics, and he's needing those for work and, and just functionality, and so they're giving him uh, some uh, grief there and then also some meds that uh, he needs as well with that. So let's pray for Brother James uh, Hartness and ask the Lord to supply his need there and give him grace and patience and dealing with that situation uh, as well. Uh, any others? Yes. And her name is Miranda. So Miranda uh, having serious uh, adverse effects from COVID and uh, could be going on life support system. So pray for Miranda. Any others? So Texas, we need to pray for them, but do it even though you don't feel like it because normally they're getting warm, toasty weather. Well, they're getting a, a, a dose of mad cow Michigan weather. And uh, so uh, just pray for them. Uh, Pastor Hutchinson was talking about uh, the, you know, his son down there and family. Um, and they're just without power. Pipes are ba breaking and there's a lot of damage going on. And so... Just pray for them. Yes, any others? Brother Shay, did you have your hand up? You did? Okay. Okay, I think that's it. I was trying to recall quickly in my mind, and uh, so pray for these. Um, and let's pray for them tonight. So you're welcome to pray here together. Uh, just with your your family um, and then uh, or take these home and pray through the week and um, lift these up before the Lord and I will see you next Sunday this Sunday this coming Sunday I don't know why I said next this coming Sunday I'm not going anywhere I wish I was going somewhere warm warm sandy turquoise water somewhere nice but I'm not I will be here and so um, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, have a great week. God bless you. You're dismissed.